I'm Steve for This Week with Cars, and this week I've got a 1934 Chevrolet Master four door sedan that has been sitting since 1976. I was told that it ran when it was parked, so hopefully everything is still intact. I actually haven't taken a very good look at this car yet. 40 years is a very long time for a car to sit without being run. The only good news is this car is from the 1930s, which means a lot of the things on it are going to be completely mechanical, not electric or hydraulic. So there's a good chance that they still work. Let's take a look around it. The exterior of the car looks to be in pretty good shape. The wheels have been painted and new tires have been fitted. I think that's because the car had to be moved several years ago and they must have put new tires on it then. I don't think they cleaned anything else up. This probably sat in a barn somewhere. Let's take a look inside. On the floor there, that's remnants of what used to be on the ceiling here. For its age, the seats look very good. On the floor, we can even see one of the old residents. There's another one over here in the corner. It might have gotten stuck and couldn't get out of there. They got a set of keys with the car, but they don't seem to fit the ignition. Here in the back, things get a little more rough. The headliner is falling down in here as well. Underneath the tire cover, we can see there's a mouse nest back there. This could get pretty ugly when I take this stuff out. This car does have a handrail as well as a foot rail for you to rest your feet on. I see hiding behind that tire, there's a carburetor. I sure hope that this car has a carburetor on it. Otherwise, there's a really good chance this engine is really seized up. Around the back, you see the license plate with the 1976 registration sticker. Looks like they fitted a brand new tire to the spare as well. Passenger side looks just the same as the driver's side did. The Masters came with a 207 cubic inch inline six cylinder. 1934 is the first year for what's called the stove bolt engine. I had an old Chevrolet truck that had this engine in it. Everything looks intact on this side. We've got the coil, starter, distributor with the cap and wires still hooked up. Looks like some updated heater hoses at one point, and the fan belt is still in place. On the other side, we have an oil bath air cleaner. The carburetor is in place. Look at that giant horn. It has a belt driven generator. It uses a road draft tube going through the floor there for the crankcase breather. And a single exhaust coming out of the back of the exhaust manifold. Right here is a pipe connected to the intake and this is a vacuum pipe that powers the vacuum powered windshield wipers. I'm going to start by taking all the spark plugs out. Boy, those are really stuck on there. This one doesn't look too bad. Now let's take the boroscope, take a peek inside the cylinders. That's the cylinder wall. Ooh. Top of the cylinder does not look the best. Oh, there's a bunch of worms in there. That is all bugs on top of the piston there. I would not be surprised if this engine is stuck. Let's check the next cylinder. There's the cylinder wall. And there's the piston right there. This one looks fine. That's just a bunch of carbon buildup. Number three. 
This one is almost at the top here. That's just a bunch of carbon buildup. That one looks fine. Number four, looks like there's bits of something in here. I don't know what those white chunks are. That cylinder wall looks pretty rusty. I bet this one is seized up as well. Number five. Number five looks pretty crusty. Something in there. I don't know what that right there is. That doesn't look good. Some kind of strange formation. Chunks of something in there. Not sure if those are bugs or if a mouse has drugged something in here. If you look at where this, the piston and the cylinder meet, that looks pretty corroded. Again, I think this cylinder is probably seized up. Here we're in number six. Oh yeah, look at that the cylinder wall and where the piston meets, that looks a lot better. We just see some carbon buildup here. The cylinder looks pretty good. You can see a little bit of scoring on the side of the cylinder there, but that's to be expected for a car this old. This engine isn't looking very good, but the good thing is this is a pretty common Chevrolet engine that they use for a lot of years. I'm going to put some oil in the cylinders just in case I can get it to turn. I have the car in the air now. You can see the fuel tank, the rear end. For the age of this car, it's not very rusty. This is just surface rust that we're seeing. Right up here is the battery tray. That's where the battery would be sitting. So I'm glad to see that there is no battery that was left in here. It's probably why the tray still exists at all. Right here is the bell cranks for the cable operated brakes. These rods go up and then attach to some cables, which then attach to the wheels and operate the brakes. There's our road draft tube popping out the bottom there. And unfortunately, here in the front, we don't have any access to the crankshaft bolt. So turning the engine from down here is going to be a no-go. I could put a battery in the car and try the electric starter to get the engine to turn over, but I don't want to damage the starter or the gear on the flywheel. And I also don't want to turn the engine completely over. I just want to wiggle it a little bit, see if it will move. I don't want it to make a full rotation. Getting to the front crankshaft bolt is not going to happen without taking the radiator out. So the only option I have left is to put the car in gear and rock it back and forth and see if the engine will turn or not. Now the car is just sliding on the surface here. That engine is well and locked up. That's as far as I can go today on a 1934 Chevrolet Master. The plan for this car is to leave the exterior the way it is, get this car running and driving, probably fix the headliner and the seats, and even possibly redoing the covering on the roof. But the next step for this car will be to remove the engine, get it torn down, it will need new pistons, it will need machining. So I'm sure this is not the last time that you're going to see this car. If you want to see more videos like this, comment below and click subscribe.